Hi everybody, this is Karen. Welcome back to our channel called Our House. And this video is a follow-up to my previous video talking about the Robinson Curriculum new ready-made flashcards. So a lot of you wanted to see how it is that I'm storing them because it is a lot of flashcards. We're talking about about 6,500 flashcards that last you from the very beginning of the program to the end. So how can you organize and store so many flashcards? How do you keep it organized? That's what we're gonna go over in this video, so stay tuned. House. Okay, so my dream way of storing the flashcards would have been a card catalog, like those old-fashioned library card catalog systems that's my dream way of organizing it but those things are pricey uh, i didn't think they would be but they are trying to find one online uh, it's difficult you can try to make your own diy it but it's going to be expensive it's a lot of materials and i don't have those handy skills so i had to be creative with what i have so i used this ikea storage system to create my own sort of card catalog and I'm gonna show you exactly how I organize in the bins but I forget the name of this storage system it's one of the most popular ones at Ikea a lot of people use it to sort Legos that's what I was using it for uh, prior to this or toys you know things like that this is an organizational system so what I did is the first drawer is math and then as you can see it numbered uh, 4 through 60 books are here, 61 to 89, 90 to 110, 21 to 129, and so forth. It goes all the way down. So I'm going to show you exactly how I organized it inside. <laughs> okay, now a little disclaimer. Yes, it is a process. It is a challenge to organize all the cards because they don't come like all the ones, all the fours together, all the fives together, all the sixes together. They're in big chunks like I showed you, big stacks. However, it seems that each stack has some fives, some six, some seven, some eights, some nines. The next stack has some fours and fives and six and seven. So my suggestion as to how to organize it because I was trying to let, delegate that to my daughters, but they were getting overwhelmed because they each had the same numbers. Um, so my advice on how to organize them the best, most efficient way is to go through one stack and just make a pile of all the 60s, of all the 70s, of all the 80s, of all the 90s. Don't try to break them up into 61 piles, 62 piles, 63 piles. It's going to take a long time. Just do it by tens. Then once you have all the tens done, then take one stack at a time and break it down further to, you know, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65 piles. Uh, some of them are going to have a lot more cards than others. Then after you have those smaller piles, then you can put them in envelopes or whatever way that you want to store them. So that's just my advice, how I found it the easiest to organize. And so now I'm going to show you what it actually looks like okay so here we have four through 60 and what i did is i just you recycled uh, so a piece of cardboard just to separate it and make it look nice and as you can see i just used envelopes and i have here on the corner the number and the name of the book so when you open it like this it's pretty easy to just uh, pick out the book or the number that you are on same on this side and i wanted to show you for the ones that are thicker here some of them get uh, really thick there's a lot of cards for a book they don't close ni nicely in an envelope like they do in the earlier books as as you go further along on the list there's more cards but I find that if you just fold the flap inside like this and you have the words like this then it's fine and then if you have a system like this it works out really well so see we have just all the cards here. These are books where it's getting more and more cards. So as you can see, just folding the flap in and keeping it this way, it's fine. It's, it's not a problem, even if there's a lot of cards. Now, some books have a lot, a lot of cards, and I'll show you what I did with those because you couldn't even fit them inside an envelope. So here, they still fit. 
in an envelope uh, just with the flap inside. And I like to give it a little bit of space and layer it this way so that you can see them all when you open it instead of just being tight like this, okay? I don't think that would be a good idea because then you can't really see. So if you give it some space so you can see the uh, numbers clearly and the letters, that's better. So here all the way at the bottom we see that there were a couple that had too many cards to even fit in an envelope. A Tale of Two Cities and The Rise and Fall of the Confederate. So for that I would use these from the dollar store and I just think it's better anyways to break down uh, the cards for them a little bit more. Maybe one week, um, one stack. So those were the only two that didn't fit in an envelope. A Tale of Two Cities and The Rise and Fall of the Confederate. All of the other ones, as you can see, even though there's still a lot of them, they fit in the envelope. I really like the flashcard system. It was a bit of work to do it all. However, it's a really great feeling to look at this and know that for my whole schooling career, I am done. <laughs> I am done. That's it. So that's it for how I organize them. It does take a bit of work, I'm not gonna lie to you. It took about two, three days to do it all, but I had a lot of interruptions. You might be able to do it in a shorter amount of time. Plus I had to figure out a system of organizing the cards before doing this. So hopefully I can save you some time by just giving you that tip. Go through all the stacks and just separate them into tens um, and then once you have done all of that, then separate them individually, starting with your ones, like four, five, six, seven, you know, separate those, all the fours, all the fives, all the six, all the sevens, and then get your envelopes and then start labeling it four, all your fours in, fives, all the fives in, you know, might as well just write the title on the very top as well. And then um, you can think about where you're actually going to store them. But these organizational systems from Ikea are fairly inexpensive and you can find them on Craigslist or Marketplace offer up even cheaper than that uh, I would encourage that and or you could use maybe like a small you know set of drawers um, yeah I'm sure you could get creative so now how do we actually go about using them each of my children have one of these also from the dollar store and inside they could have there's different folders so maybe one of them would have the math facts if they're working on that. Another flap contains their uh, Dolch site words for their grade level or words that I see them frequently misspelling on their essays. So I give them a list of words. They make their own flashcards just on index uh, cards. And so when they master that word, I will put a date and the check mark that they have mastered it and then it goes to the back. And so another flap would be the vocabulary cards that they're currently working on. So that's our system. They go from here to another file system in their Robinson curriculum notebooks, okay? And again, they have maybe their math cards and the words that they frequently misspell wrong on their essay or Dolch site words and then the vocabulary words. So when do they work on what's inside of this folder? Well, the math flashcards would be first thing in the morning with their math. For the little kids, that would be this and then raise arithmetic or for an older child, it might be this and then sex and math. And then the Dolch sight words or the words that they frequently misspell, I have them review those quickly before they write their essay. That way they have a better chance of writing um, their essay with less errors if they review those frequent words that they misspell. So I'll have them review that before their essay. And then the vocabulary words they review after they've rewritten their essay, after I've corrected it and they've rewritten it, and before they read their book. So I think that's just a great sequence because they're, now they've done the writing portion, they can kind of relax from that, and now they're just studying the vocabulary words, studying the word meaning, and that's gonna help them if that, those are the words for the book that they're going to be reading, obviously. All right, everybody, I hope that this video was helpful to you and I will see you in another video. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me any questions below in the comments. Bye.